Apple provides many different ways to protect your privacy while using an iPhone or iPad, but iOS 15 and iPad OS adds even more features designed to keep you safe and secure. You can hide your email address, hide your internet activity, keep track of app permissions, monitor insecure passwords, and much, much more. Let me walk you through the best ways of protecting your device and securing your identity that really reduces the amount you are tracked online and from leaking your personal data accidentally too. If you've got an iOS device, then these 12 tips, you need to use them immediately. First, make sure you're running the latest OS version. Go to Settings, General, Software Update. You'll either be told your software is up to date or be prompted to install the latest update. Once that's out of the way, let's crack straight into this with tip number one, protecting your mail activity. Companies and advertisers that send you email can acquire certain information about your activity in the mail app. They can learn if and when you read a specific email and even determine your location. They do this in different ways, but often through using a tracking pixel. This is a remote invisible image that calls back to the sender's server when you open an email. It tells the sender exactly when you've opened it, your IP, your location, and more. The update to iOS 15 and iPad OS 15 introduces a privacy feature called Protect Mail Activity that can stop this. Turn this on under Settings, Mail, Privacy Protection. Then turn on the switch for Protect Mail Activity. Mail Privacy Protection blocks tracking pixels by automatically downloading all remote images the second you receive an email and also blocks your real IP and location from being known. This effectively makes tracking pixels useless, protecting your privacy. Any remote content from an email message loads privately in the background so it can't be used to track you. Tip number two is a huge one. App developers can track you and send targeted ads as you use certain apps and websites. Apple introduced a new feature that will prompt you if an app wants to track you. This can be turned on from settings, privacy, tracking, where you must turn on allow apps to request to track. As you use your apps, they may start asking your permission before tracking your activity. Of course, apps that don't ask for your permission may still track you, but at least this setting gives you a chance of evading this. And I can only imagine Apple cracking down on apps from developers who try to short circuit this. The third tip is all about location and how you can make that a little bit more fuzzy. If you're wary of sharing your specific location with certain devices, but still need to use your device's location services for certain functionality, there's a solution now built in. Share just an approximation of that location. You can set this up manually for individual apps under settings, privacy, location services. Make sure location services is turned on, then swipe down to a list of apps tap a specific app to share location either while using or always turn off the switch for precise location and the app will now only use your approximate location you can also choose to grant permission for an app to know your precise location for one time only maybe it's a ride sharing app and they really do need to know where to come and pick you up the app will get access to your location until a session is complete the app will then have to ask you to share location again the next time it wants to access it Here's how you can monitor whether an app is accessing your camera or microphone, which helps you to think about whether the app really needs to be doing that. If you're running iOS 14, iPad OS 14 or higher, you'll see a visual clue at the top of the screen when your camera or microphone is being used. A green dot tells you that your camera is currently activated, while an amber dot tells you your microphone is currently on. You can then judge for yourself if you think your current app needs that type of access. Tip number five is all about limiting access to your photo library. Certain apps will ask for access to your photo library, a reasonable request for a camera or photo editing app. 
But if you have sensitive photos that you want to keep private, you can limit access to just specific photos. If you receive such a request when launching an app, tap select photos to choose the photos which you want to grant access to. To set this up for all apps, go to settings, privacy, photos, select an app, change the setting to selected photos, and then choose the photos that the app can access. Using a strong and unique password for every app and website account is a challenging task, but every weak password you use and reuse exposes you to security risks. So tip number six helps you see which of your passwords are potentially vulnerable, either because they're too simple or because they're used with more than one app or website. You can check this under settings, passwords, security recommendations. Make sure the switch is turned on for detect compromised passwords. The screen will indicate any risky passwords you should change. Ever had that feeling that your phone is somehow watching you and then serving you up content that relates to something you've just been doing online? Yeah, me too. This is all about cross-site tracking and tip number seven helps you to stop them from following you when using Safari as your browser. Confirm this setting is active under settings, Safari. Scroll down to the privacy and security section and make sure the switch for prevent cross-site tracking is turned on. Now, when you use Safari, you can tap the AA icon in the address field and choose privacy report from the menu. The report shows you which trackers were prevented from profiling you and the percentage of websites that contacted trackers. You can also see how many trackers were stopped for each site and the names of the actual trackers that were blocked. Does the app you need really need access to your Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection? Most probably don't, so follow this tip number eight to fix that. Since the release of iOS 14 and iPad OS 14, certain apps will request local network access the first time you launch them. If you launch such an app, a message appears saying that the app would like to find and connect to devices on your local network. Tap don't allow to deny access. You can also enable or disable this for each specific app from settings, privacy, local network. Turn off the switch for a specific app to disallow access. Do you want a summary of all the apps that have accessed your iPhone sensors and cameras in the past seven days, as well as what data the apps are accessing and where they're sending that data? Tip number nine is the app privacy report. Here's why it's important and how to enable it. Many of us have dozens, if not hundreds of apps on our iPhones. And many of those apps are accessing our cameras, photos, location, and microphones, not to mention sucking up other data about us and sending it back to third party services and advertisers. The app privacy report will show you just what each app is accessing and the data it is collecting and sending off. This transparency helps to better inform you as to which apps you may want to delete. Go to settings, privacy, app privacy report. You can tap on any app listed to find out more about what data it is accessing and the network activity associated with that app. Tip number 10 is to enable two-factor authentication. This adds a second layer of security to your Apple account. In this case, requiring a one-time use code alongside your password for you to log in from an unfamiliar device. After you set it up, even if someone has your password, they shouldn't be able to access your account without also having your phone or computer. For example, if you have an iPhone and you sign into a new Mac for the first time, it will prompt you to enter a verification code that pops up on your iPhone. If you buy a new iPhone and don't have another Apple device, you'll receive a text message with the code. If you haven't already set up two-factor authentication for your Apple ID, you should. To enable it from your phone, head to settings, your name, password and security, and then tap turn on two-factor authentication. You should also enable this feature on other important online accounts if you haven't already done so. 
For the next couple of tips, you're going to need a paid iCloud Plus account, but the entry level to that is pretty inexpensive and these tools are, I think, worth it. For tip number 11, let's talk about Hide My Email. This lets you sign up for apps and websites with a randomized email account in order to anonymize your identity and reduce the amount of spam sent to your actual email address. Go to settings, your name, iCloud, hide my email to create a new address or use any random addresses you may have already used with Apple's older sign in with Apple feature. The next time you need to create an account to access a website or fill out an online form, use a random address instead. Any emails generated through this account get forwarded to your actual email address, but you can always deactivate the anonymous address if you start receiving spam. Let's move on to tip 12 with Private Relay. With iCloud Private Relay, your actual IP address is replaced with one from a range of anonymous addresses based on your general region as a way to hide your specific location. Since your internet traffic is bounced through two different servers, no single entity, including Apple, can see or monitor your internet activity. People call it Apple's VPN, but it's probably more accurate to compare it to Apple's version of the Tor network. It's important because it's incredibly easy for advertisers, companies, and even hackers to track us online. VPNs can help shield our activity, but they can be costly and you need to be sure you're going with a trustworthy one. VPNs can also be a little complicated, but since this is baked into iOS itself, iCloud Private Relay takes all the hassle out of setting up a VPN. Well, kind of a VPN. The feature is only available to iCloud Plus subscribers who use the Safari browser. To enable iCloud Private Relay, go to Settings, Your Name, iCloud, and then Private Relay Beta. Then turn on the switch for Private Relay Beta. Now, a word of warning, this isn't working all that well yet. In order to work, the websites you visit must fully support Private Relay. If a site doesn't, it may show you content for the wrong region or make you go through extra login steps or maybe not work at all. If you do run into issues, you can disable Private Relay completely by returning to the Private Relay beta page and disabling that same switch again. Finally, here's some bonus reassurance about Siri, which is also why I avoid Alexa. Siri requests are now processed on your device rather than sending the data to Apple's servers to process. Now, voice assistants can be very useful tools, but they traditionally work by sending your requests to those remote servers to be processed and that's a potential privacy threat. Keeping the process on the device tends to eliminate that risk. There's no setting you need to turn on to activate Siri on-device processing. Your iPhone and iPad will process Siri requests on-device automatically if it's capable of doing that. Devices that support on-device Siri processing include any iPhone or iPad with an A12 chip or newer. Here's another video from me I think you're gonna find interesting. Thanks for watching. I'm Saab Johal, and I look forward to seeing you back here again on my channel soon.